Hey man, quick question for you. We're shooting the DSG sequential differences video, and the DSG, what is the code for the DSG that's in the car? It's just the, two, the something 250? Hey guys, this is Nate Vincent from SCP Euro. We're going to be talking about the differences between a DSG and a sequential gearbox in a Golf GTI TCR. So right here we have the DQ250 DSG gearbox that came out of the number 72 uh, FCP Euro Motorsports TCR. So this is a standard DSG gearbox. There's a couple differences that Volkswagen Motorsport made with this, but overall this is a standard gearbox. So let's highlight some of these differences. The first thing you're going to notice is that this gearbox is tagged. You can see these, these cables with this barcoded tag. It's making sure that no one can get in here and change any of the programming, change any of the gearing, change any of the settings in this gearbox without Volkswagen Motorsports or Audi Sport knowing. Another big difference you'll notice in this gearbox is we actually have control over the limited slip unit. So this is the same limited slip unit that you would find on a Golf Performance Pack. That said, we have a button on the steering wheel where we can actually go through three separate modes with different diff lockups. So if you're driving in the rain, you may want a different mode than a wet track, or if you're trying to conserve um, your front tires that are, that are fading away, you may go to a different setting. Most race series make us lock this down to one setting. And then the last big difference between this and a streetcar gearbox is that the gear ratios. So this is still helical cut gears, just like you'd find in your street car, but this gearbox runs significantly closer gear ratios. So, you know, race cars don't need to cruise on the highway and get good fuel economy. What we need is power every shift. So the gear ratios are closed in a little bit. Aside from that though, this is really pretty much a street car transmission. It weighs in about 202 pounds. So it's a pretty hefty piece. And one of the reasons why DSGs tend to be heavy is they actually have two shafts. So rather than having a typical transmission where you have your two shafts, your gears are lined up with each other. This actually has output shaft and two input shafts. On one of those input shafts, you have first gear, third gear, and fifth gear. And on the other input shaft, you have second gear, fourth gear, and sixth gear. So all of that mass has to be spun by the engine. And obviously that's gonna rob some horsepower that, from going straight to your wheels. Um, another thing I'd like to point out on this gearbox is you'll see right here, this clutch system, basically, this is the flywheel that feeds power into the gearbox. Um, and that weighs in about 26 pounds, but a lot of the mass on that you'll see is around the outer edge. So that's going to have a, a, a big inertia or flywheel effect, um, which is great for keeping a car with nice idle and, and having it move. But anyone who's ever installed a lightened flywheel will know, as soon as you do that, yes, your car is more apt to stall with a lightened flywheel, but it also accelerates quicker and revs quicker. The last thing I'd like to point out about this gearbox is these are the axle shafts. So you can see that it has unequal axle shafts. So you'll see on the passenger side of the car, the axle shaft is significantly longer than on the driver's side of the car. While that's not that big of a deal in a street car, and especially when you have an electronically controlled differential that can limit the torque to either side, there is benefits, especially in a, in a racing or a high performance application of having equal length half shafts. All right, so now for a quick comparison. Looking at the DQ250 DSG transmission found in the TCR, including the flywheel, we had a total weight of about 228 pounds. Moving over here to the sequential gearbox, including the flywheel and the clutch, we have a total weight of about 134 pounds. So you can see we're nearly saving almost 100 pounds by switching to this gearbox over the front axle. So the big difference between a sequential gearbox like this and your normal street-driven gearbox is the way the gears engage. These use dogs rather than synchronizers. Synchronizers allow for a nice smooth shift when you lift off the throttle and push the clutch in. As soon as you have a dog box, it's not a smooth shift anymore. It has to be very forceful. It's sort of like you have a, a transition and in a street car, you have this nice smooth transition, but it can't take a lot of force. On a race car, you have a transition that requires a serious amount of force, but it can happen very, very quickly. The problem is that because this happens so quickly, these dogs get worn out. We actually have to rebuild these gearboxes and replace the dogs in them every 5,000 kilometers. So the benefit here is we can shift without lifting off the throttle up and down. The difference is, is rather than having gates like a normal car has, or gates as you can see here on my shirt, you actually have a, a barrel. And that barrel, as it rotates, it spins around sequentially, and as it rotates, it selects the different gears. First, second, third, fourth, 
fifth, sixth. So the motion of going up and down the gears is simply push forward to go up, pull back to go down. So that allows it to run this mechanism on here that is driven hydraulically and electronically. Um, so when you pull the paddle to go up, this mechanism actually pops the transmission into the next gear. And when you pull the paddle to go down, it does the opposite. This mechanism alongside the sequential barrel allows for really precise and quick gear changes up and down. Another thing we have to note about a racing transmission just like this is it has straight cut gears. So on a streetcar transmission like this, we're gonna have helical cut gears. That means that the, the face of the gear, so if we're looking at this flywheel, this isn't a gear, but it, it sort of is a gear. You can see this is a straight cut. A helical cut would take these and turn them to the side a little bit. The reason for a helical cut gear is it doesn't make a lot of noise. It's really quiet in operation. The problem is, is there's more power loss associated to this. So if you have one gear driving another gear, there's always gonna be a little teeny bit of power loss. If that's a helical cut gear, that's gonna be greater than if that's a straight cut gear. Now the cons to a straight cut gear, the reason you don't have them in your street car, is they're extremely noisy. They make a lot of noise from the gear actually impacting the next gear. If you've ever watched a race car video, or maybe been on a race car simulator, and you hear this really loud whirring that just gets louder and louder and louder as the car gets faster and faster. That is a straight cut gear in the transmission making the noise. Let me just review really quickly how a normal gearbox functions. The input shaft, which brings the power from the engine into the transmission. The output shaft, which is how the power leaves the transmission. This is responsible for driving the wheels on the car. Lastly, a shifting mechanism, in the case of our sequential, is a barrel type selector that we previously discussed. The gears on our input shaft are locked or splined to the shaft itself. That makes it so all six gears are actually rotating at the same exact speed. It's easier to think of this as one whole assembly instead of a bunch of different gears. The gears on top of this diagram, on the output shaft on the other hand, are not all directly attached to the shaft itself. Instead, they roll on bearings in order to constantly free spin based off their corresponding gears from the input shaft. You can see here that all the gears are spinning, yet the output shaft and all our engagement dogs are sitting still. At this point, the car is sitting in neutral. Everything is moving as it should be, yet there is no drive being driven to the output shaft. With an upshift from the driver, you can see the gear selector barrel spin. With this, the selector fork pushes the engagement dog in contact with the dogs attached to first gear. Now, since our engagement dogs are splined directly to the output shaft, once it connects with first gear, the output shaft will be driven by the first gear ratio. As the driver repeats the process of upshifting, the barrel continues to spin, and the sequence in which the gears are selected continues. The same thing takes place when downshifting, except the rotation of the barrel is reversed, therefore reversing the sequence. All right, so looking a little more at the specifics of this gearbox, I'll show you a couple things. So we have a hydraulic throughout bearing right here. We have a normal input shaft, just like any other transmission. We have our differential over here. So now looking at this flywheel, you can see that this is relatively light. So this flywheel, this entire mass with the ring gear here weighs 22 pounds. You'll also notice that a lot of the weight is distributed evenly and actually more towards the center of this. So that is going to decrease the inertia required to spin this thing. So another thing you'll see as far as rotating diameter is you'll see this clutch is very, very small. So because the diameter is so small in this, its rotating mass is less. And this is going to have a really, really fast engagement. So really, as far as using a sequential gearbox and a clutch, this is used for starts and stops, and that's it. All gear changes are done without the clutch. So as far as life on this, because it's only used for race starts and race stops, it really will not wear out. The problem is, is now because we have a racing clutch in these cars, you have to get them towed around. So you'll often see the race cars get pushed a lot more and and towed around by little golf carts around the racetrack, that's usually because of this. If you were actually to use this clutch to try to drive the car, first, it's very difficult because it's almost instant engagement, and second, it's going to wear these pucks out. The next big difference in this sequential gearbox versus a streetcar gearbox is the differential. So this differential is actually has a mechanical preload on it. So I talked about the DSG and how it had the three preload settings, and this was all controlled by a computer. This is a strictly mechanical preload. And so there's different ramps and different preload settings we can use in this limited slip differential. So this is something that we will tune at the racetrack. This is much lighter and is a little bit more aggressive. So as far as front wheel drive car, one of the most important things for a race car, especially a front wheel drive race car, is to be able to get the power down as quickly as possible exiting the corner. 
You want to do this, though, without losing all your traction and losing your front turning traction and just having the car wash out wide. So this is going to be a critical part in our success in 2019. Now moving on to the last little bit, you'll see one of the things here is I talked about the unequal length axles right here. This one on the passenger side being significantly longer than the one on the driver's side. This in unequal axle length is controlled by this electronic differential to, to stop torque steer from happening. The mechanical way you can stop torque steer from happening is to have equal length axles. You'll see here that the passenger side axle is actually the same length as the driver side axle here. So there's no difference in that. And the way they do that is by running the center shaft. So you see there's actually this very light hollow shaft that goes right in here. And then it has a mount on the back of the engine block right here. And that allows the right and the left axle to be the same length. This distributes the torque evenly to the right and to the left side, and it keeps that steering wheel from pulling once one way or the other when you get on the power fully. As you can see, there's not that much of a difference between a sequential gearbox and a normal five or six speed gearbox found in a car. That said, between the differential, the axles, the overall weight of the system, the shifting mechanism, and the straight cut gears, there's small incremental changes and advancements in every single aspect of this gearbox. That is why a sequential gearbox has an advantage. Now looking at the DSG, it does some things very, very well. Volkswagen has engineered this differential and they have it electronically controlled and it is one of the best in the market. It also has lightning fast shifts. So if you're shifting up or down very, very quickly, this gearbox does a really great job. That said, its downside is its upside. It is actually the problem with a DSG gearbox in a race car is the fact that most of it is controlled electronically. And the systems, while they can do a really good job about 95% of the time, sometimes they fail. So for instance, if it, the car thinks you're accelerating, it's going to select the next gear up. If you immediately start decelerating, it's not going to be able to downshift quickly. That was an issue we saw all through 2018. The other big downside to this gearbox is its weight. It is based on streetcar parts. It has helical cut gears. It has two input shafts. Um, it requires a lot of metatronics, you know, electronic units here and here. It requires cooling. All of these things add up and just take away from, from the overall performance of the gearbox and the car itself. That has been a lot, I understand. We're super excited about this. We're going to be testing out our new sequential gearboxes. We really cannot wait to see the performance gains we see from these things and get you guys some onboard footage. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Um, and if you want to see more of this stuff, more stuff about racing gearboxes and cool DSG stuff, please subscribe to the channel.